Hi, this is our second class on discourse analysis. Today we will talk about context. The reason why we have decided to do that is that context is a notion that has been with us for quite some time and it has been looked into by a lot of specialists in the field and therefore we would like to delve into this notion and see what we can make of it. Before talking about context, I would like to say, I would like to clarify that our course on discourse analysis will be informed by different theories of both discourse and linguistics. More specifically, I'm talking about theories coming from the fields of pragmatics, systemic functional grammar, enunciation theory, general theory, to name just a few. In fact, the most common terms that we are going to be making reference to, such as discourse, language, communication, are the most difficult to define. We will not define terms such as language, discourse, communication. We do not need a definition. What we need is a course. Therefore, what we will do is teach a course on discourse analysis, language, communication, so that by the end of the course, after having reviewed a number of theories coming from different disciplines, we can get to know what discourse analysis is all about. That is, we will not get to know what it is from the very beginning. We will learn that by the end of the course. So what we are saying here is that in order to understand what discourse analysis or language or communication are all about, we do not need to like look up definitions in a dictionary. We do not need to have a definition, a two-line definition on discourse or language or communication. It requires a whole course in order to understand what discourse is all about. Therefore, the course will define the discipline. Now, our course, which will define the discourse, will be informed by a number of theories, as we have already stated, coming from the fields of systemic functional grammar or linguistics, pragmatics, enunciation theory, genre theory, phase theory, etc. More specifically, our course will consist of a number of thesis on the nature of language and the nature of discourse. And this thesis will be countering other thesis. I will be more specific in a minute. So, unlike other fields of inquiry, I'm right now thinking of generative grammar, that is a theory of language, more specifically a theory of syntax with a logical component and a phonological component, but it's a theory that can account for one aspect of language and that is allegedly not informed by other disciplines. You know, Chomsky draws a very clear distinction between generative grammar and other types of approaches such as systemic functional grammar, traditional grammar and all the uh, theories that will fall in what they call the waste paper basket of linguistics. That is, theories that are focused on performance rather than cognition. So a generativist grammarian or linguist or teacher will be thinking there's one theory that will account for one aspect of language, my object, that is internalized language, whereas here we will be dealing with externalized language, that is all the aspects of language use, again, such as the pragmatics of language and the assumptions that participate in all acts of communication and that are so very important when we communicate and, and we are not aware of them. We typically think that communication is based on what we say rather than what we assume or presuppose. So we will be dealing with aspects of language that are considered to be external to cognition, that is what we call discourse analysis. It is very difficult, at least for me, to decide where to get started. This is a question that I put to myself every time I start teaching a class and every year I make little changes regarding the choices that I make. The, the starting points might be uh, difficult. For this class I have decided that the best way to go 
is to get started with systemic functional linguistics. The fact that we will start talking about systemic functional linguistics does not entail that systemic functional linguistics is more important than other theories. We will start talking about this theory, we will go on talking about other theories. What is important by the end of the course is to get a holistic picture of the dialogical, the conversation, the dialogical relationship that there exists between the different theories that compose what we call discourse analysis. When we talk about systemic functional grammar or systemic functional linguistics, we should say that the professor, emeritus professor that has developed the theory is Michael Halliday. Michael Halliday started exploring the functions of language in a book called Explorations into the Functions of Language that dates back to the 1970s and in 1984 he wrote his first book called Introduction to Functional Grammar, a book that has been reviewed and has other editions such as the 1994, 2004, 2014. Every 10 years we get a new version of Introduction to Functional Grammar. Halliday has made some very important contributions and we will discuss them in turn. The first important contribution is the notion of context. He has divided context into A and B. A would be context of culture, B would be context of situation. So, what Halliday claims is that there exists a very important interaction, a very important dialogue and dependence between the text and the context. We have just named the two different types of context, we have labeled them, we have talked about context of situation and context of culture, we now need to define them. But before we start doing that, I would like to introduce a whole other notion, the notion of metafunction. Halliday will say that whenever we use language we are doing three things at the same time. We are conveying experiential meaning, we are conveying textual meaning and we are conveying interpersonal meaning. Again, I am simply stating these facts, I am not accounting for them. This is what I will do in the near future. As we will see, the three functions or metafunctions of language have correlations with the three variables of the context of situation, feel, tenor and mode. So experiential meanings are realized by means of the variable field, interpersonal meanings are realized by the contextual variable tenor and uh, textual meanings are realized by means of the contextual notion of mode. So experiential, interpersonal and textual meanings will find correlations in the three variables of the context of situation, namely feel, tenor and mode. So we will first briefly define the three metafunctions, then we will try to find correlations with the variables of context of situation, and then we will also briefly define genre. Once we have done that, we will go the other way and we will start talking about genre. There is like the most general term, the broadest uh, notion. Then we will get into context of situation with the three variables, again, filter and mode, and we will see how filter and mode, the three variables of the context of situation, are realized in the text by means of the workings of the three metafunctions, interpersonal, experiential, textual. So, before we move on, I would like to clarify a number of things. Number one, whenever we use the word text, we mean any semiotic, that is, meaning-making unit, that will enable us to communicate with others or ourselves. So, a notice, no smoking, is a text. A feed on Facebook is a text. A class is a text. The Bible is a text. These are all different types of texts. We will get into the ways in which uh, texts are realized when we discuss mode. I would also like to clarify the fact that given that there are three metafunctions, experiential, textual, interpersonal, what we are countering here is the fact that there's only one type of meaning. Traditionally, 
language has been thought of as a system conveying only one type of meaning, experiential meaning. That is, language is used to represent a reality that is out there. What we are saying here is, language is used to represent reality the way we experience it, experiential meaning. We also use language to relate to others, interpersonal meaning, and we organize our texts in coherent and cohesive fashions. Therefore, we resort to textual meanings. Last but not least, again, we need to emphasize the importance of context and the relationship that there exists between context and text. There is a reason why in our next episode, next class, we will be talking about context and we will start with context of culture, namely genre.